Hi guys, Alex here. Welcome back to Girl Talk. I've got a little bit of mess and a little bit of drama today for you guys. First, we are going to go ahead and do a Peetsopolis world update. Did Peets let it slip that maybe this situation with Chantal and Salah is a temporary marriage? It has been on a lot of people's lips, and I have to say, I'm starting to be convinced. But what's going on with her? She has been pretty absent from the internet lately. We will talk all about that. And then we are going to go ahead and get into the Amberverse. She uploaded a brand new vlog. There was a, another episode of Vlogmas. And really, things aren't looking good. Amber looks very unwell. All that and more coming up on today's edition of Girl Talk. Let's just get right into it. I mean, shall we? All right, you guys, welcome back to our Pizzopolis World update. The Chantopolis kingdom is in shambles. Chantal's quest to get her man has left the kingdom residence with no home. When will she return? What's a kingdom without a monarch? Today we usher in our temporary king, King Pete's. With no one else to turn to, we have been left with no choice, my friends. Anyways, Pete's actually dropped a little pinch of tea in his latest live stream, and I've got some updates for you guys. Someone in his side chat brought up the fact that she had said in her community tab that she was not ever going back to Canada, which if you haven't seen, she actually changed it to say she will not be returning to her quote-unquote old life instead of to Canada. But we saw what we saw. Pete says that she is going to have to return, if only to renew her visa or apply for a different kind of visa. She may not stay for long. Word on the street is she may be in trouble for all the nonsense she pulled in Natter's live stream. If you remember during the camping trip, she acted coy about all the BS she had pulled the night before. How embarrassing for Salah. If you are so done and so over your ex, you wouldn't be in his side chat raging, right? Or would you? Let me know. Although it's safe to say that they did bait her. They were asking for trouble. Her name, it just kept coming up like word vomit. Does Salah want to keep her off of YouTube? And if so, why? She talked about putting her happiness over entertainment value, which honestly didn't make sense to me. Why can't you do both? Put out videos while not compromising your happiness or new morals. For me, something just isn't adding up. Watch her pop up live from the villa any second now. It honestly wouldn't surprise me. A girl can dream. During Pete's live stream, he admits that the happiest time of his life was actually when he was with Chantal, which is funny because now that she has exited his life, for the time being at least, he is seemingly living his best one. One thing that I found interesting is that Pete has yet to even speak to Salah. I don't know, the whole thing is a bit strange. He's never spoken to Bibi, Natter, or Salah. He is her ex, but he is also supposedly her best friend. What do you guys think? I guess it comes down to Pete's being kind of a socially awkward guy and just not wanting to engage in the nonsense. I wouldn't want to be a part of it either. Pete's has come to terms with the fact that things are not going to go back to the way that they were. Although T, the rent was paid on the villa, so she must be planning on at least coming back and gathering up her garbage. Pete's realizes that she wants something more than just a roommate situation. She wants a husband, a lover. But Pete says that no decisions have been made. And when she comes back, we'll get a clearer, more concrete picture of what exactly is going to happen next. Could be anything. Pete says that that is when all the decisions are going to be made. Whether her relationship will continue or not, and whether they will stay in Kuwait or Canada. That is what Pete said. I know there's a lot more to this, lots of paperwork, and I don't know if she will even be allowed to make some of the decisions she wants to make. The truth is, though, if they are in love, they can make it work somehow. I just question Pete's choice of words, whether they will continue this relationship or not. Um, that's when all decisions will get made. Like, that's when all the decisions are going to get made, whether, you know, whether her relationship is going to continue or not, whether she's going to move over there permanently, if he's going to move over here. I have seen from you guys this suggestion that they are in what is sometimes referred to as a temporary marriage. Now, this is kind of a tricky subject. Just know going in that some Muslims do not think that this is okay. Let's take a look at a short excerpt from an article from the BBC to get a better picture of what this is all about. This is a direct quote from a woman who was in one of these temporary marriages. It allowed us to meet without breaking the bounds of Islamic law. 
We both wanted to date, to go out to dinner or go shopping, and just get to know each other better before getting married, which we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise, says Sarah. Now, I will leave this entire article linked down below if you want to look more into this. The more I read about it, the more it actually makes complete sense. That, combined with Pete's word choice, makes the puzzle pieces come together for me. But alas, more conjecture while Chantal hides away for whatever reason. The only thing that she posted was a couple of community tabs asking for quote-unquote constructive feedback. What are our recommendations for her maturing skin? I don't understand why she worded it that way, like constructive feedback. Why don't you just ask for product recommendations? So that was the first post. And then she followed up with this. And that's the last she's been heard from. What is going on with her? That's nice, I suppose. She's always saying how she can never win. So I'm not going to say anything. Very kind, Chantal. I hope you find products that can help you. Interestingly enough, four days ago, Chantal wrote that they had a fun week planned but I don't know what happened to that. Also, I know we've been talking a lot about it lately, but a final warning, Natter will be making an appearance in court tomorrow and he is confirmed for 9 a.m. So we shall see what becomes of that. They were live last night, him and Debbie. Debbie is not on camera. She's only behind it. Apparently, they spent the weekend in Ottawa, which I found interesting because he's got to go right back, right? Ugh, it just gives me the shivers watching them. Wouldn't justice being served just be the cherry on top of this year of girl world drama? I can't handle another disappointment. All right, you guys, let's move right along and head into the Amberverse, right? She's been putting out these Vlogmas videos every day, a new surprise. So let's talk about the newest one. This one being the best Pokeball, low self-esteem and body issues day five. Quite the mouthful of a title, if you ask me. Amber opens up by showing off her pimple and then doing some scratch off cards. Watch Amber turn $5 into three in 10 seconds flat. What a magic trick. It's time for Amber to open up another gift. She got Jenga, which is actually my jam. I love a good Jenga moment. The trick is to set people up, sabotage the game. My anxiety is seriously triggered by this. Twinkie remains unimpressed and unbothered. I noticed someone mentioned like the whole gift giving with Feline is kind of dumb because like isn't the best part of gift giving seeing the person's face and we can't see Feline. So yeah, like I get it. Amber mentions in the video Canadian YouTuber Pink Sparkles and a lot of people have been speculating that maybe that's where Amber's mysterious package is heading. She's not talking to Chantal anymore. Amber manages to throw in the word egg. Just skip that part. It's stupid. Eggs. Amber puts herself down a lot in the vlog, which kind of made me sad. Particularly in this clip, Amber doesn't look well. She calls herself ugly, but that's not it. To me, she doesn't look ugly. She just looks very unwell. And it's sad because she needs to take better care of herself. Funny, adding to the Pete's theme of this episode, Amber Lynn was actually watching Pete's and she gave him a little shout out during the video. Isn't that sweet? Amber says that she wanted to send him a super chat because she's so proud of him. She says it would do more harm than good because Chantal and her are just not in a good place right now. Which is funny because I saw and I'm really mad at myself because I accidentally deleted this screenshot. So you're just going to have to trust me. But I saw on Foodie's page, Amber's picture under her members. Anyways, she says that she is over sticking up for Chantal, except when it comes to fat shaming. She says that they will never be friends again, but she enjoys Pete's as some white noise. She notices that Pete's is cooking more, doing more. I think she should have just sent the super chat. Now she's making it weird. It's kind of cute, kind of condescending. She goes again into the very negative self-talk, blaming it on the makeup slash no makeup. She's getting ready to donate clothes to Dana. I mean, Goodwill. She shows us her underwear drawer. Amber has unworn underwear that she will donate, but she won't donate used ones. Like, I guess I'm just not about that life because whatever I buy, I wear. Amber can't keep track of anything. Amberlynn shows us her underwear. Girl, nobody asked. Let's talk about the Weight Watchers update. Amber says that she gets 78 points a day with 28 freebie points, I think, a week. She's getting into that headspace where she feels overwhelmed with the amount of points. She eats this itty bitty little chocolate bar. And I feel like this is where Amber always goes wrong. She needs something that's satiating. But alas, it was only two points. Amber talks about how she is resting that day because her lipedema is acting up and she needs to elevate her legs. 
She ends the video by doing comment of the day. And for once, it is a nice comment. Fat shaming for Amberlynn one. All right, you guys, that's going to be it for today's video. What do you guys think? Are you convinced that this is a temporary marriage? Is she unable to go online? When is she coming back to Canada? A lot of questions still. It was interesting. One of the most interesting parts was that the villa rent was paid because a lot of people were speculating that she was, you know, going to run away to Thailand or something like that. But our girl is not above the law despite how it sometimes might seem. And what do you guys think of Amberlynn's new video? She doesn't look very good. She looks very unwell. That's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think, and I will, of course, catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Jazz hands. More jazz hands.